In this comparison, we'll be looking at all four LEGO Star Wars playset Republic gunships, the first and most recent of which were released over 20 years apart. We'll be scoring each set based on the included minifigures, play features, displayability, value, and I'll chime in with my opinion on each, and at the end we should find out which of these Republic gunships is the best LEGO has ever created. Some basic info before we go in too deep, this is the 2002 Republic gunship, it included 686 pieces and released for just $90 alongside the release of Episode 2 Attack of the Clones. Six years later, in 2000 with the release of the Clone Wars, we had the Republic Attack gunship with 1,034 pieces for 120 US dollars. Then in 2013, we had what, according to my Instagram poll, is the best Republic gunship by a long shot with the 75021 Republic gunship with 1,175 pieces, and it also released $420. And most recently in 2023, we have the more specialized Coruscant Guard gunship with 1,083 pieces, releasing $440, making it the most expensive Republic gunship to date but not really because of inflation. When it comes to minifigures in LEGO Star Wars sets, I think there are a few different things that matter. Quantity, which is pretty objective, quality, which is pretty subjective, and context, which you would think is pretty objective, but some people still want to argue about. Now, when it comes to quantity, the 2002 gunship technically has the most, with eight. However, two of them are super battle droids, and one of them is a droidica, so three of them are kind of characters LEGO wouldn't really classify them as minifigures, and five of them are tried and true minifigures. And this is actually true of all the gunships. All of them technically have five minifigures, as LEGO would count minifigures, but the 2002 gunship obviously includes the three extras. The 2000 and 8 gunship includes nothing extra, the 2013 gunship includes a couple of extra super battle droids, and the 2023 gunship includes nothing extra either. So if you're strictly thinking quantity, 2002 is definitely the best. When it comes to quality though, I think the 2008 and 2013 sets set themselves apart from their 2002 and 2023 counterparts. By the way, the pilot in the 2013 gunship, he's not supposed to have printed legs. I already shot a bunch of cool b-roll though and don't want to redo it. First off, something small like the super battle droids in 2002 were this light blue color, but in 2013 they're a metallic gray color which is the proper correct color based on what we see in attack of the clones another huge quality thing in 2013 were the actor specific faces specifically on padme here as we see padme's actual face represented versus in the 2023 gunship they're reusing the Jyn Erso face from 2016 because lego has become increasingly cheap over the years even though they're making more and more money each year it's inexcusable people complain about the price of lego all the time i'm gonna sit here and complain about the quality it's just not there on padme now that's not the only problem in that gunship because because the Commander Fox included is known as one of the worst, if not the worst, clone troopers LEGO has ever created. But on the clone troopers generally, from 2002 to 2023, we can see they've gone through some changes. 2002 is still the accurate movie style for the armor. They make it the realistic style. I know it has a gaping hole in the helmet, but the style choice here is to properly represent the clone trooper in a unique way, but it still properly represents what we see in episode two. It also gets a pass just because it's old and it was the first one, but what happened over the years with clone troopers, LEGO learned from this. They wanted to make their product better, and in 2008, we had that better product with the Clone Wars stylized clone trooper that accurately represented what we saw in that Clone Wars movie in 2008. Then in 2013, they finally came out with episode two clone troopers again, and I think they really killed it with these guys. They looked phenomenal, although they used the same helmet as the Clone Wars trooper. They included a completely different print because it's a completely different style from movie to animated. And finally, in 2023, I actually think these clone troopers are very, very good, except they had to include the helmet warts for no reason. You know, the vast majority of people don't want to put a visor on these guys. They just want plain course on guard troopers. Lego had to throw on attachment holes and it looks terrible to me. Finally, when it comes to the context of minifigures in each set, I think the best one here is clearly the 2013 gunship. 2002 gunship isn't bad as far as context goes because it's just a bunch of clone troopers and some battle droids like we see in the movie. But Jedi Bob definitely muddies the water there as he's not a direct named character. The 2008 gunship figure selection context also isn't perfect, but it was based on concept art and released in conjunction with a movie release. The 2023 gunship definitely could have used either more characters or a revision to its character selection because it really should have been Padme and Clovis with the Coruscant Guard gunship. I note Padme is also in the completely wrong outfit. Overall, quantity, quality, and context in mind, I think the best figure selection is clearly 2013, followed by 2008, 2002, and lastly 2023. All four of these gunships are packed with play features, some of which are shared across each and every model we see in front of us, but it's going to come down to the execution of those play features and some of them even have some oddball play features that may set them apart from the others. So each set has these little bubble turrets on the front and the back so we're going to test them. 
Yeah, that falls off pretty easily on the front of 2002. The back of the gunship fares a little bit better, but eventually falls off anyway. 2008 had some improvements here, as you could actually move the thing without it falling off immediately, but eventually I do find that they fall off, and sometimes you can even get the whole thing to come off completely, which is rather annoying. The back of the 2008 set, in my opinion, saw an improvement where it could actually move. However, mine is a bit used, and so it does kind of fall apart a little bit easier than I think it would have when new. 2013 used this piece right here to really refine the method so that the back part doesn't move at all and so everything kind of moves without falling out very easily. This one really is no trouble at all. They also changed the piece they use on the back so it doesn't fall off as easily if at all either and you still get a pretty good range of motion on it so this one is definitely an improvement here too. And lastly the 2023 gunship same style on the front very easy and good to use and they went very small on the back but the play feature is still there it moves around very easily and doesn't just pop out so that's nice. Now each of these builds is going to have a pair of mini figure accessible cockpits but in 2002 we probably had the worst design for this if you go one-handed it kind of lifts the whole section with it it's not such a great way to do it but you also just have the four studs at the bottom which does mean minifigure legs can pretty easily get stuck down there so this is not my favorite method or design for the cockpit access 2008 was a slight improvement as they held down the whole middle section here a lot better but they also have it hinged at the back so it just lifts up easily you're still going to find four studs at the bottom so many figure legs could still get stuck but this is a vast improvement as far as accessing the space and then finally for 2013 and 2023 they had a much better piece available basically the same design for each where it's just an all-in-one piece lifts up very easily and the minifigure legs shouldn't get stuck on either of these as they are half tile half stud designs for each model the big panel on the side will actually open to reveal interior space and we'll go in depth on each in a second except in 2002 where you actually can't open it from the side what you're going to notice as we go further and further back in time with these gunships is that the space usage here is better and better. It's cooler. And right here in 2023, we literally have nothing included here. No, I didn't take whatever was in here out so that you can see it be empty. They literally included nothing. And it's kind of sad to see that they've kind of lost their touch there. There's literally no play feature included. At the front of the 2013 model here, got an area where figures can stand. But underneath the panel here, we have the weapons rack with some extra flick fire missiles. And it is quite literally better than nothing. 2008 was insanely cool as it included a small clone command post build that you could pull out and use with your clone troopers and then on this other section where on 2013 we saw like some troopers be able to stand you actually had a back to tank. Put this out come on. And so with this very cool looking back to tank you could open it up and place any injured clone troopers inside so that they could get the proper medical care and then you could throw it back in. So yeah, 2008 had some pretty cool stuff in these sections. Although as you can see, it's a bit of a struggle to get it back in. There we go. 2002 was easily the most outside of the box though as you lift up the entire cockpit section and pull away. Yeah. That's insane. There's a magnetically attached crate inside, and within it, there's actually a little mechanics rack with some tools, so you could actually do some work on the gunship if needed. There's a couple nicely printed control panels, a little walkway to the back section of the gunship, and a little bit of workspace, I would say, in there. Overall, pretty neat interior. It definitely was crazier and crazier the further back you go with these LEGO Republic gunships. They've gotten so tame that they literally included nothing in 2023, which is incredibly sad, and this doesn't sum up the entire playability category but the 2008 gunship definitely has the best play functions in this section with the command post and the back to tank like 2002 is just outlandishly wild it's pretty cool in its own right but i think that one is the best of these little sections here i think the troop area on these sets is a very integral part of the playability as a kid i loved being able to put lots of clone troopers inside and we're going to see how each of these sets stack up as far as putting figures inside and the little ball turrets on the side of a couple of them because they're episode two based the little ball turret on the 2002 gunship is really simple to pull out just literally yank it out and the actual like windscreen on the front can actually move down kind of easily if you need it out of your way you can move it out of your way but you take a clone trooper you put his little legs on there and you're good to go it's really the same story for 2013 the design is just upgraded and better looking but you pull this front section down you can see a couple studs there for your minifigure it's kind of funny that the little fin has to fit inside of the brick there but it does fit and uh, you're good to go as well so both of these features work pretty nicely although i would 
say this one is slightly better for the fact that the hinge is a little bit smoother, so it's a little bit easier to move it in and out. When it comes to space for placing troops inside on 2002, there's enough space to fit the included clone troopers. It's not an excess amount. There's definitely a little bit of unused space in the middle where they could have had more studs for more troopers that they kind of left as an empty pit. So I do see that as a bit of a trade-off, but I do find that there is enough space and that it's easy enough to access. I think 2008 upgrades on what we saw in 2002 as the weapons rack area takes up a space in the middle that was otherwise an empty space back in 2002. You still have plenty of space to put your clone troopers inside of the gunship and they've added in an additional speeder bike which can be accessed by pulling down the rear panel at the back and pulling out. You can place a minifigure on it, have them fly around on there. Very cool additional feature on the inside of the troop bay there with the speeder bike. Now we'll see that same speeder bike feature brought into the 2013 gunship although it doesn't impede as much on the interior as it's just kind of tucked away at the back and there's more stud space than what we saw in 2008 and 2002. There's an additional crate in lieu of a weapons rack so you're characters are just gonna have to hold their weapons I guess and I believe 2023 is the worst tier by far now first off it doesn't include anything additional there's no speeder bike no control panel at the back like we saw in 2002 just completely empty rear section of the interior and as far as troopers go there's enough room to put a couple of clone troopers in there but because of the way it's designed it's a very tight gunship and so you really do have a much more limited space not to mention accessing that space is even harder because the door doesn't open far enough it's really supposed to be two doors that split like it does in 2008, but LEGO Star Wars couldn't get it done because they made the model too small and it definitely suffers here. The play just isn't as good as it was in previous models because of how small they made it. Each set has play functions in this top section as well with a little crate in 2002 here. There's also something fun hidden underneath the panel here, although it doesn't really do anything. Looks really cool though. And then on the very top we have this which can be pulled up and away from the body of the gunship. However, it doesn't fire anything or do anything other than move around. 2008 brought the heat as it included two storage bins which are a little easier to access if you have the door open. Underneath the front panel, you'll actually find a couple of probe droids, which are nicely stored inside and ready to be used at your leisure. And then on the very top, it was all the rage at the time, flick fire missiles. 2013 saw a sizable storage compartment on the back. The side is a couple of crates that you don't need to open the door to access. And much like 2008, flick fire missiles could be found on the top too. 2023 has some crates on the back here that are easy enough to open, but they didn't really do anything else with the rest of this top section for play features. Now, maybe you'll see this as a highlight for 2023, but on each wing side, it does have a pair of stud shooters. Both the 2008 and 2013 sets have a more accurate bubble turret piece on top. These can be opened to allow a minifigure to sit inside each set. It's a pretty cool role play feature, but having the figure sit there isn't actually what happens in universe, I guess. Because in 2002, it's completely empty. There's no bottom side to it when there really should be like a little bottom ball part to it. But it still looks rather nice there. And technically you could see it as a play feature because it is on a hinge and can move. But like, I don't think that's an intentional play feature. So not really going to count it. All right, last thing about playability. How do you pick the model up? Well, in 2002, you just lift it up. And this is not the best way to do it because eventually it can stress the model and it can break. So it is relatively swooshable and nice like that. But it is something that I fear over time could wear poorly and break apart in your hands because that's the exact experience I had with this 2008 set. It's a big hefty boy and it does not have a handle on top so you had to grab it with what are actually kind of nice grips on the side of the set but eventually this thing could break through some rough play and I can kind of feel it as it will pull apart with some of the bricks because there's not a lot of technic in there. You can literally see it starting to happen now like I was saying so it is something that is pretty weakened over time again we'll just fall apart that's rough for a play set. So fortunately both the 2013 and 2023 models actually included handles and this makes picking them up and swooshing them around a lot easier and safer because it's integrated into the skeleton of the set with all the Technic pieces. So this just ends up working way better as it's not going to fall apart in your hands. Now this theoretically could slip out of your hands, which is something I always worried about in 2013. But this 2023 model has a little bit of an overhang on the front, which should avoid any slippage. See how I can just pick it up with one finger and it won't just slip out. So it's also a bit of a lighter model, so that might ease that pain a little bit as well. But super easy to move this 2023 model because it's super strong and that hand 
handle there is so well designed. Not to mention that with this set, you can literally pick it up by the wing. It's that strong of a model. So that is something that plays into the 2023 set actually being a good play set, despite not having a lot of play features. It's a very sturdy model. They definitely borrowed some of the design that made the 2013 model so strong because you can see some of the exact same techniques. However, they really improved in 2023 as far as strength goes. So it's definitely the strongest model. When it comes down to it, ranking these sets as far as their playability is concerned is difficult because some of them do some things really well and some of them fall apart when you want to fly them around. Like I remember as a kid, specifically this 2008 gunship falling apart in my hands and this 2023 gunship will not be falling apart in kids' hands, but it completely lacks any fun imaginative play features that all of the other sets have. And it's like, where do you rank things because of the way that shakes up? After some deliberation from left to right, I have ranked them worst to first as far as play features go. I just think the feature set on the 2023 Coruscant Guard gunship is pretty abysmal. I mean, we went through them all one by one, and it's pretty obvious which sets have cool things and which set doesn't have really any cool things. Now, when it comes to the displayability and accuracy of these gunship builds to the source material, all of them have the color schemes down pretty well. I would say the worst one as far as the color scheme is concerned would be 2002, just because it kind of has a few of those random colors that you can see in the build and never been a fan of having random colors in a build when it's not supposed to. So that definitely gets a point off there for that. The only other build that really has an inexplicable random color is that yellow brick on the back of the 2008 set. Now, I think the proportions on the build are one of the most important things as far as accuracy is concerned. Of course, the shape of it looking like it does in universe is very important. And the worst one here is going to be that 2023 gunship because they basically chopped out a middle section compared to what we had in previous versions and then squeezed it together. Like it's clearly a smaller build. You can see it side by side. And a lot of people try to rationalize this by saying this one is more minifigure scale, but they're wrong. If you look at a picture of this 2013 gunship, and then you look at the gunship in the movie, it's pretty clear that they're pretty dang spot on. But I think the place it shows best is the headroom on that Coruscant Guard gunship. It's just non-existent. And you can see the headroom is pretty dang accurate on that 2013 gunship. Despite a lot of people saying it feels massively oversized, it's just not when you compare it to the source material. The same can be said for 2008, and I would really say the 2002 one is also slightly undersized. Don't get me wrong, none of these are perfect one-to-one -one minifigure scale, and that's also not something I look for in a LEGO Star Wars set typically, but the closest one to it would seemingly be the 2013 gunship or maybe the 2008 gunship. It's certainly not the new gunship. This thing's just too small. I don't see it as a huge knock against this gunship because what it really comes down to is does it still deliver the features and details that you want? And I feel like at least detail wise, this one does a pretty good job. Obviously we went through the play features. There weren't any. After some deliberation and minifigures not included in this accuracy rating, I would say that the Coruscant Guard gunship is the least accurate. And if we want to talk minifigs, it would still get the title, but the doors are supposed to split in two, and they don't. It's a single door that slides back instead of two doors that split in two. That's just wrong. We also have the stud shooters on the side of the wing versus the accurate bubble turret laser cannon thing on all three of the other gunships. And then it's the only one that has decidedly been like cut in half and then made too short compared to the other gunships, which have just slightly more proper proportions compared to this newer, smaller gunship. It's definitely not more accurate than these two. I think you could make the argument for 2002, and maybe I'm slightly blinded by nostalgia. Here's the accurate ratings and updated points. When it comes to value for money, you could not buy this original 2002 gunship for its original price $90 today versus the $140 of the Coruscant Guard gunship. You also couldn't buy it for the inflation adjusted price of $150. So it might feel like a mute point to compare value across eras like this because it's not really for a purchasing decision at this point. However, it does tell you a tale of what LEGO is giving you for your money nowadays versus what they gave you back in the day. So I still find it to be important. So these are the two cheapest gunships and essentially for ten dollars more you're getting a slightly larger model with more characters of course with the additional super battle droids and droidicas you do have a couple printed bricks in there like that republic logo some of the control panels that we saw inside this very nice brick on top is printed and it definitely has more play features now i think the value in the coruscant guard gunship is both that it's a unique gunship but it also has unique characters like palpatine and padme that people might be after even though characters 
like Padme and Commander Fox are not the best versions LEGO could have put out for them. They are unique characters that people would want versus the more standard layout of the other gunship. And of course, at the release time, Jedi Bob was not all that notable, so he was not the sought-after character he might be today. But I think part of value also absolutely has to be quality, and the quality on some of these minifigures, as we discussed, is not quite up to snuff for modern-day standards on the Coruscant Guard gunship. And you could look across the street at the 2002 gunship and say these aren't all great minifigures either, but it's kind of era-specific. In 2002, this was perfectly acceptable. In 2023, what we have here, I do not find to be perfectly acceptable. It's been 20 years. They've made improvements beyond what we see in this set, and a lot of the figures we see here are straight-up regressions from what we saw in previous years. Ultimately, between these two, I think it's a toss-up for value. I do think they're the bottom two in the value category, no matter what, so I'm going to give them a tie, and I'm going to award them both two points, and we'll look at the bigger gunships for the better values, because they're not that much more expensive, and they are a heck of a lot bigger. I think there's no better way to show how much better value the middle two gunships were than to show them next to the modern gunship. $140 versus $170 inflation adjusted, and I feel like when you put them side by side, if you're going to call that $170, this feels a lot more like $120 than it does 140. It's substantially smaller, and maybe because it's so far away, it doesn't feel that way. They're hard to put next to each other. The wings get in the way. You can just see a lot of the size difference there, especially in the main body of the ship where it's wider and longer. It has the larger troop bay. It's got actual substantial features underneath the cockpit area. It also has more Clone Wars accurate minifigures than we see in the new gunship. And all of that, again, for just $30 more, it's just, to me, no competition there. So at $170 in today's money i think the 2008 gunship was the second best value upon its release because the best value was the 2013 gunship it featured basically the same exact size footprint but $10 cheaper. It had an upgraded design that looked better and a little bit sleeker than we saw in 2008. Just a little bit less blocky, a little bit stronger with that handle on top to be able to pick up the model and have it not fall apart in your hands. It also featured source accurate minifigures and the designers weren't trying to make excuses for being cheap. Like what a good era 2013 was here. I think you could make the argument for 2008 for $10 more being more worth the money than 2013 for $10 less because of the features lost right underneath the cockpit. I mean, 2008s were just incredible play features features that they included for the money, but I think at the end of the day, because they're about the same size and the 2008 gunship does still have the extra ball turrets and extra super battle droids, so that kind of makes up for the loss from 2008 to 2013, I think 2013 is the slightly better value for money. Anyway, here's how things went for value on each gunship, and it's unfortunate that LEGO is not providing a better value today for your money, it seems, than they did in the past. When it comes to how I would personally rank these sets from worst to first, I think the order is, you know, pretty Pretty obvious if you know me well enough. I think the new gunship just doesn't deliver. It's undersized, it's overpriced, and the figures are poor quality. It's inaccurate in more places than not. It's just kind of sad. The coolest thing it has going for it is its color scheme. It does have a really, really dope color scheme that if it was maybe a $170 set, I would be just all over, but I feel like they had to make too many compromises to make it so small. Like, doesn't it look small on the camera? It looks small to me. The 2002 gunship has its charm, its nostalgia. It's ultimately just not as good as what we ended up seeing in later years. The figures are also nostalgically good, but of course, if released today, they'd be getting the same talk and treatment that these ones are getting. But these weren't released today. They were released 20 years ago, and we saw improvements as years went on in 2008 with a great cast and crew of characters here. I think the biggest gripe with the future gunships really compared to 2002 was that it had so many clone troopers. And this has been one of my gripes with many of these larger clone sets. Two clone troopers, really? $120 at the time gunship? two clone troopers. Like I always find that to be a little bit ridiculous and it ended up being the same in 2013, two clone troopers and two super battle droids. You're telling me we get the same number of droids as clones in a big clone set. Always thought stuff like that was wrong and it is still wrong, but man, that 2013 gunship is really dope. So it was a 2008 gunship. And honestly, I could see flip-flopping these depending on how I feel any day of the week. Like both of these are amazing, incredible sets. And I find them both to be like the best versions of the gunships that you could possibly own. Lego finally made a new gunship after years of demand and I don't think it really delivered on what people were hoping for. It is a really cool style, you know, but it's just not as big and cool and detailed and accurate and feature packed as many of these other gunships. I mean, a lot of people want to complain about me complaining about Lego sets and saying it's just a kid's toy. If it's just a kid's toy, where are the play features? 
you know they're just gone in that newer set but here's the final score for this republic gunship comparison i would not run out to the store to upgrade to the coruscant guard gunship but it is a nice unique item to have i just wouldn't sell your other gunships to go out and buy it i would keep what i consider to be the better ones and then maybe have that as an additional part of your display not the only gunship on your display so let me know what you think down in the comments section below if you guys enjoyed the comparison please hit the like button and you can check out more lego star wars comparisons on the end screen now